In this video, I'm going to discuss the file carving tool Foremost. Like we've discussed in other modules, oftentimes when a file is deleted, the actual data contents are not overwritten, but rather the location in memory, or the location on disk where this file was stored, is simply marked as unallocated. That way the file system knows that if it needs space, this is available, but until the file system actually needs the space, the data still remains there. So, we, so there are different ways where we can actually recover this information because it still remains on the disk. So one method we use is called file carving. In file carving, what we do is basically scan the drive, looking for specific signatures indicating that there's certain files there. Many different file formats have a specific signature or data structures which indicate that, that a file is of a specific format. So for example, a JPEG file will have a specific header. Um, the header will start with a specific signature, um, a byte string, and it will actually also end with a specific byte string in the footer, which will indicate that this is a JPEG file. So for recovery purposes with file carving, what we can simply do is scan the drive and look for these signatures. So the tool we're going to use today to do this is called Foremost. And like I said, it's a file carving tool. It's similar to Scalpel, for which you've already written a module, but I think it's a little more user friendly, so I want to discuss it here. Um, it also recovers um, a whole bunch of built-in formats, which makes it a little easier to use. Um, so what I've done for this tutorial is I've gone ahead and made a folder with a bunch of different um, file types. We have a JPEG, we have a PDF, a docx, which I can open here. Um, you see it just a simple file. Um, and then I also have a zip file, which basically is just a file, a folder containing the other three files, the docx, the PDF, and the JPEG. Um, what I've gone ahead and done is I actually took this folder, put it on a flash drive, um, and then I actually, I actually deleted the files from the fa this folder from the flash drive and used DD to make an image of that drive. Uh, we've already discussed DD in other tutorials, so if you're interested in that tool, you'd have to look there. But basically what it does is just makes a byte-by-byte -byte copy of the drive. So again, I deleted the files from the drive and then I made a, from my flash drive, and then I made a copy of it. And then we're going to use Foremost to actually recover them using file carving. So quickly to show you what I was talking about before, where file formats have specific header information. So for example, JPEGs have a specific signature, or they have a couple of possibilities. But basically, a JPEG file will always start with a specific string. So what we can do to actually see this string is if we, if we use the tool called hex dump, which will actually give us a dump of the low-level bytes of the file, and we hex dump the penguins file, type it to less so we can see it, you'll see that it actually starts, and of course we have to account for endianness here, but it starts with the string with the bytes um, in hex ffd 8 ff e 0 10 that is the signature that, um, that signals that this is a JPEG file. There's also a signature in the footer at the end. Um, There's another possibility for a JPEG file, another signature. But what we can do is, if we're using file carving, is just scan the drive looking for the signature, and then we know we found the JPEG file. Um, so before we run Foremost, what I want to show you is just how it works. So if we do a man on Foremost, you'll see that um, you can use Foremost to use some built to recover some built-in formats. Built-in formats include things like JPEGs, uh, PDFs. OLE is actually the file format for the newer versions of Office, so the newer docx files or PPTX, um, and you know XLSX for Excel. Um, it also recovers EXE files, zip files, and finally there's an all option, which is actually the default. Um, and the all will just say, try to recover all built-in options, all built-in formats. Um, and that's what we're going to use. We're going to try to recover all the built-in formats, because if you remember, we had a zip, a docx, a PDF, and a JPEG. Um, now, just to discuss, when we run foremost, we're going to use some options, and I just want to explain what they are. The options we're going to use is the dash lowercase v, which is verbose mode, which will just give us some more information when we're um, while it's processing. It will just tell us what it's doing. Uh, we use the dash capital T for timestamp the output directory. That way we'll know exactly when this um, output directory was made. Um, we'll use the dash I, which specifies the input file, which of course would be our foremost demo. And finally we'll use dash O to specify the output directory we want to run it to. 
we want to save the alpha too. Um, you sh I should know that this directory must either be empty or non-existent. If it exists and contains data, foremost will not work. Um, I also want to mention quickly that a lot of these things by default will run. So actually we could just simply execute foremost space foremost demo and that will actually um, give us a default option of recover all built-in formats and save it, save the output to a file called I believe output in the current directory. Um, the last thing I want to discuss here quickly is that we have a configuration file which we can specify. Um, that's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're going to talk about here. I'll get into it a little bit at the end, but basically the configuration file is used for non-built-in formats. So say I want to recover a file of a format that's not one of the built-in ones like we discussed before. So there's actually a configuration file where I can specify the header and the footer to look for. Um, and then foremost, we'll try to find that in a drive. We'll get back to that a little later. For now, let's run foremost. And again, like I said, this is um, I deleted the files on this drive for making a copy of it. We're going to run foremost, and like I said, the verbose option, timestamp the output directory, um, dash O will call our demo out. That's the output, and dash I is going to be the image, which of course is foremost, and I am in the wrong directory. Let's, uh, And again, dash i specifies um, the file we want to run it on, and then we execute it. And you see, because we're using verbose, it gives us some more information here. Um, like the command, we actually executed our output directory configuration file, which we don't really care about because it's built in, but foremost cares about it a little bit. And you can see that so far it's found, scroll up a little bit, just finished. So it found a JPEG here, that's the file zero. I found the docx here. You'll notice it has a lot of weird stuff because of the docx file format. I found the zip and I found the PDF. Um, you'll also notice that actually when it gives us a total, it says that two of the files found were zips. That's actually because docx is actually stored as a zip file. The docx file format is actually really a zip file. Uh, you can actually unzip the docx file. Um, and now it's done and you can see that it's saved to our desktop. The output here, and if we open it, you see we have these four. Uh, for example, the JPEG contains our penguins. The docx, we can open and we'll see that it's got the same uh, information that the original docx had. Um, and hopefully it will actually open. This is taking way longer. There it is. Um, and finally, if we want to look at the zip file, you can see that the zip file contains the same three files we started with. Um, so clearly foremost can be used to go through the drive and recover stuff. Um, the last thing I want to show you quickly is just how the configuration file works. I'm not really going to discuss it so much, but so you have a general idea in case you want to use it. Um, it's generally stored in slash Etsy. Um, and then if we can do a less on foremost.conf, you'll see that it's got a whole bunch, this is the foremost configuration file, it's got a whole bunch of instructions on how you have to specify the entries. And if you scroll down, you can read all this. Uh, you'll see a whole bunch of examples, including some that I already used by foremost. For example, here's the JPEG one, and like I said before, the header is ffd 8 ffe 0 10 which specifies a JPEG. Uh, if you are going to use the configuration file, again, you'll read some of those instructions at the top to learn how to specify the header and the footer and the other what this other information means. Um, you'll also notice that this configuration file provided, you can make your own configuration file or you could use this one that they provided. Um, you'll notice that it includes some built-in file formats and some non-built-in file formats. So theoretically, if you wanted to recover ART, I guess art files, um, you would just uncomment this, um, this line here and you'd be able to find those. And obviously there's a whole bunch and you can and you can add your own if necessary. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different formats here. We're not going to go through all them. That's about it. So I hope this was helpful and I hope you learned something and you can use Foremost to uh, recover some files. Um, and if you want to try this out, I'm going to include the, I think I'm going to include the um, this image file so that you can try this out on your own. I'm going to include it in the module. And there's a couple of challenges using some other images that you can check out on your own. 
So thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful and have a good night.